Hello everyone and welcome back to a day in the life of someone who cannot figure out create but tries anyway. And I have something really cool to show y'all. So obviously we're in a room right now with all our create stuff but if you look down there that room's different. There's an actual room there now it's not just the end of a hallway. And uh, it's because I finally figured out what I wanted to add. Might guess what it is it's a mob spawner but look. So there's light in there you're probably wondering why is there light in there? Well it's so that the farm is off and you're probably also wondering how do I get it in there yes yeah, so not supposed to be able to move the mob spawners well guess what there's a little secret with the create mod you can use minecarts to just kind of push them along and move them so that's exactly what I did I took it from the depths of our mine and I brought it up here and I made a little mob farm out of it and I made a little on and off switch so if I crouch and I spin this the lights turn off and spider spawn which somehow occasionally brings the skeleton with it and then if i not crouch and i turn this back the way it was and i kill these real quick you'll see the lights are back on so i won't have a lag machine <laughs> in between episodes i have also as you can tell down in my hotbar gotten some diamonds and built us another portal well a deactivated nether portal I wanted to make it look kind of like a fireplace, a fireplace to another dimension, so that's what I did. I built a little smokestack that just peeks out of the ground, and we have our nether portal right here. And just for a quick reminder, for those of you who don't know, we need the nether because the door I want to make needs quartz combined with redstone to make rose quartz, and rose quartz is needed for so much stuff that I need here. I also need a blaze furnace i think is what it's called so i can make brass because some of the components that i need for this door also use brass so let's hope we don't spawn too far from a uh, another fortress but i think this looks pretty cool for another portal definitely fits the style that i've been going with this entire time and I guess there's nothing else left to do except for go in and figure out what we see. I seem to have encountered a purple land. Huh. Is this place dangerous? Ooh. Yes, it is very dangerous. Interesting. It's very hard to see in this place. But, it is very cool. What in the world is that? I don't want to find out. You know what? We came here for this. So we can make the little blaze thing. I want to get some glowstone while we're here. And we also need to find a fortress, which I don't know if that'll be completely possible considering our current situation is extremely hard to see. Okay, so to craft the blaze furnace, we need this and these four. And we get, oh, it's a blaze burner, not furnace. So we need that. And then I believe we just need to go find a blaze and capture it in here. So let's go back in. I think our best bet is to dig towards the nether roof. And just use our map to kind of see if we spot any difference in what spawns. Because I noticed a bunch of these structures. But uh, I don't know how easy it's going to be to actually spot ourselves a fortress. We also need to try and find some quartz. Because I need quite a bit of that as well. This seems like a good plan to me. Nothing can go wrong, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, I think our mini map's gonna be our best friend for the time being. Maybe we'll even find another new biome. Hopefully, that isn't as foggy and hard to see. Yay, okay, so we found quartz. So let's grab that. That was one of the things we came here for. Now, now to just find a, uh, a blaze. So I have just recently found out. That there is one other place we can find blazes that is not in a uh, nether fortress, and it is the ember bog. So we either need to look for a lot of yellow or a building. 
This should be fun. Y'all see what I see? I see some very sharp corners, and it looks like hallways. That means that we are super close to another fortress. And it means we don't have to enter super scary biome. All it means is that we somehow have to get down there without falling and dying. And also get a blaze into this thing. Which honestly kind of looks cool. Might make more of them just for decoration purposes to be honest. They kind of look like they would go on, uh, on top of fireplaces. Or not fireplaces, on top of chimneys. My best guess is that there's a blaze spawner maybe there. Maybe there. Maybe there. So I think we're gonna go and aim for this one because I think this is gonna have the best bet for a blaze spawner. And to be honest, we don't really need to find a blaze spawner, but it's gonna be the easiest way to get to a blaze. Probably need to start digging down right up around here. Looks like we are up in a secluded part of it, so that's good. We won't have as many creepy crawlies to deal with. And I'm not exactly sure how this works. I think I just place it down and it, and then the blaze walks into it and gets captured. You just gotta get over here and kill one of them. Okay, and I think it's just place it down. Kinda maybe push it in. Okay, so I'm just apparently a little, little stupid. So let's kill this one. <laughs> we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Oh, okay. So we got one. That's what we needed. So we got the quartz and we got our blaze burner. Whew. The nether is dangerous in this version with all these mods. It is crazy. All right. Well, I guess there's only one thing we can do, and that's go back. So let's go back to the overworld and start setting up, I guess, how we want this thing to go underneath our back. I don't know. Crate is awesome, though. <laughs> All right, and we make it back to the overworld without losing another life. I would call that a success. So I believe blaze burners are simple. Let All right, so blaze burners. I believe you just, like, stick them underneath. But I think because we've just done that, he is deactivated. So I believe we have to go get ourselves some fuel. All right, so we need fuel. So let's grab some fuel. We need some of these zinc for sure. All right, so we need zinc and copper. Those are the two big ones. We need the coal. Oh, we got some nether quartz. So let's go ahead and mine some of that. We don't need to mine all of it, but we do need to mine quite a few blocks of it. So I think the only thing left for us to do is to make some of that brass now that we have the ingredients for it. So I believe what we do is we just pop one in there, one in there. Oh, and uh, fuel our little guy down there. So boom, there he's fueled, it mixes, and we get, oh, we get two brass out of it. So, one, one. <laughs> I, it's still so cool. Out. One, one. <laughs> oh, I love the spinning animation. I don't know why, but it's just, it's just pure happiness seeing this thing go spin. Oh, no. Like, stuff like this. I don't know. I like things that spin. Spinning things are cool. And spinning things are everywhere in Crate, and I don't know. They're, they're just cool. They're just better. It adds movement. It, it's just... It's so... It's, it's so cool. Like, I feel like this was some of the stuff that Minecraft was missing. Because as much as Minecraft does have a lot of life things to it, and like a lot of aspects that kind of you can simulate life with, um, there's nothing quite like this, where it's just like a lot of movement. It's really cool. I don't know, it's just, it's amazing. I love Create so much, it's just so cool. And now we also have stuff like that. Oh, it would appear a little buddy has run out of fuel. There you go. And we're making a lot of this, because even though I don't need all of it right now, I know I'm gonna probably need it in the future and I don't wanna 
be doing this a quite a lot later on. Obviously, we'll have it automated by then. But like, come on. You, you can't tell me this isn't cool. Like, this, 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 nothing quite like it. I believe the block for brats also looks pretty neat. Like, if I'm not mistaken, it looks pretty cool. It's like a different kind of shade, but it looks kind of like copper. I have to make one just so I can show y'all. Looks like we're almost done here with our brass making. Just got our last one. And then we can go start building all the components for a door. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so there's the last brass we needed. We can put the rest of the fuel back in our little furnace over here. Let's grab all the stuff for the door. Yes, I have a chest full of stuff for the door. That's how long that this thing has been sitting here, that I have a whole chest for it. Um, okay, so for these brass casings, I believe it is the same thing. We need strip wood. And you just place this down and... Cool. Okay, so yeah, it's the same way as the uh, andesite stuff. I also want to make one brass block for y'all, because it's like a mix between copper and gold. But to be honest, it looks more like gold than the actual gold block. It's kind of strange, but I think it could be used in pretty cool gradients with gold to make like gold piles with kind of shimmering gold and not so shimmering gold. I think it would be cool. Uh, okay, so we need three of these, but it looks like it gives us two each. It's just a redstone torch and a brass casing. We can do that easy. We just need some of that for something else. We need two torches. The two torches, two of these brass casings, and we got four of these. We only need three of them. Uh, you know what? I'll put them in my create chest. Yes, my create chest is growing. There's so much stuff in here that has to do with create. <laughs> um, and then let's see what else we need. We need one of these sequenced gear shifts, which uses electron tubes, which use iron sheet and polished rose quartz, and the polished rose quartz is made from rose quartz, which is made from quartz and red dust. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was quite a bit of crafting. We should probably craft quite a bit of this as well. There's a lot that uses these uh, quartz these special quartz and uh, they are pretty neat okay so we need to press down let's make five of them just in case we need to press down some iron so plop that in there and watch it press I think this is my favorite part like once it's automated just watching everything go I think is gonna be my favorite part I don't want to hide it behind walls I want to see it do its thing like it's just neat to watch so we have that we have our quartz. We can plop this on top of the sheet, right? Is that how you make it? Oh, we have to sandpaper these. That's what we have to do. How do you make sandpaper? Paper and sand. Well, I guess I should have seen that co Do I not? I don't have any sand. Well, let's go get the paper then. So we have our piece of paper. How do I not have sand? Who does not have sand? I live right next to a river. How do I not have any sand in any of my chests? I think I failed as a river goer. <laughs> okay, so we got our sand. Paper, sand, sandpaper. I'm just gonna make three of these because I know that these are used quite often. So what do we do? We hold that, we hold this, and then... Oh, okay, that's... That's actually kind of cool. It's like eating, but with sandpaper. <laughs> they use, they get used up really quickly. Dang. Okay, so that's good to know. For every eight things we sandpaper, the sandpaper breaks. That's actually really good to know. So that's 16 items right there with those two sandpapers. Sandpaper is very weak, apparently. But I guess that's kind of true in real life as well. IRL, it's not very strong either. It tears a lot, or it gets used up, and uh, but that's that's not the point. I am getting sidetracked, so we make five of those. 
and sequence gear shifts. We need a cogwheel, a brass casing, and one of those electron tubes. All right, so it was this, this, and this. Yay! Okay, cool. So we have everything for our door now. Uh, let's get our glue out, because we're going to need that in just a moment. So basically, how this door works is very simple. Very simple indeed. Uh, let me grab some extra blocks real quick. So at the top layer, we have one of these um, mechanical bearings. That is not how it was supposed to be placed. And that's going to be what the door actually attaches to and kind of swings it open and whatnot. We also have, I have a couple buttons hidden around that I need to actually put these on. So that button in the middle will be how the door actually opens. So you run over here, you press the button and that'll go and it'll open. And then we have to set the one over here as well. So that will do the same. That's how you get out. And then we just need to finish this circuit here. Um, and apparently it is super easy. It just involves a little bit of trickery. Okay, so we have to have a block there. Okay, my, my hope is, is by doing this, the water will work. Okay, so that's spinning now. We just gotta break ourselves out of here. So now, if I place that on there, and I press a button, is that gonna spin? Oh my goodness, thank you. Goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness. So now we can actually build the door. This goes on there. And then in each of these corners, we have that. And we have a cross section. So this all needs to be glued together. And if we press this, it's going to swing open like that. And it's going to close. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. So we can cover this up. I don't need to see that no more. We can cover that up and we can build the rest of our door. Very simple, very simple door. We just got these little corners. We got some more of this. We have four buttons. Okay, I believe that should work. I stand corrected, okay. All right, so now that should all be connected. Huh. It took my glass. Okay, so... Weird. That should not be happening. So now, I can press that, run inside, and it closes behind me. And I can press this, it opens, I can walk out, and it closes. Oh my... Oh, this is this is so cool. This is honestly so cool. I love it so much. It's a door that works. I can walk in, and it closes behind me. And I can press the button, and it opens. And it closes behind me. And now we actually have a vault door to our thing. Like, it's completely secure except for the button. But, you know, zombies can't press a button. Oh, it's so, it's so cool. It's so cool. I press this. And it opens. It goes back in. And it closes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So now that's done. We have a little mission to do. So that was the main thing I wanted to get done. Uh, but there is another thing I want to get done. Or at least start on. So we have this thing called iron. Iron's very useful. Iron's very important. But you need iron farms. And... While iron farms are easy to make, especially since we have a villager, I don't want to build your average run-of-the-mill iron farm. Mm-mm, no. Since iron's so important, I want to extend this hallway down into this nice big open room and have our iron farms, four of them, yes, that's right, four, on the floor with like the scaffolding running across. I want to extend this hallway 
and see all the iron farms on the ground doing their thing. I think that'll look so cool. And it'll be like the center of, of this next little area considering everything kind of needs iron at this point. So much stuff needs iron that I think it's important enough to make it like the centerpiece of the, I guess, factory floor. So I'm gonna quickly extend this hallway and I'll meet you back later. So we have this place dug out. So I guess the next step is to decorate it so that it's not just a bunch of stone. All right, so here it is all decorated. We have the walls, the ceilings, the floors, and this little walkway decorated. And I've even gone ahead and marked out where the four iron farms are gonna be. And if I scroll over the schematic, you'll see what we're actually building. So it's four of these, plus I'm gonna add a little thing that kind of compresses the iron to actual iron, cause it'll go to be nuggets there. And then I have to separate the, uh, the nuggets from the flint and then compress the nuggets into actual iron and then put them into a storage thing. I think I've decided that there's going to be one storage chamber here, another one over here. That should suffice for enough storage. And then we're going to have some chests that kind of shoot up and land on this platform. I'll also have like a turn off switch of some sort so that we can stop this. The, there's going to be a certain process up here that is running in all four of these corners. And so I'll, if I hit the button, what it'll do is it'll retract pistons that are holding one of the blocks, which will stop the spinning motion, which will stop the whole process. So that's my thought process behind that. And uh, I guess the only thing for us to do is actually like build these. So I'm gonna get going to doing that and I'll see y'all in a bit. Woo, it, uh, it's done and it's completely functional and it looks really cool. So this is basically the process. You have that that drills, and then let me just walk down here for a moment. So that drills, then it gets dropped down here. As you can see, it drops down as gravel. The gravel moves along and it gets washed by this fan blowing water at it, turns into either flint or there's a chance that it turns into iron nuggets, which is what we're truly after. So let's see if this one... Oh, that one just disappears. Oh, that one too. Okay. Let's see. Well, one of these. Alright, so there we go. One of the gravel turns into an iron nugget. That iron nugget travels along this belt, goes into this chest, and then it actually will get sorted. So this way the flint goes, this way the iron nugget goes. The iron nugget gets tossed into there with some of the other ones and eventually it will get pressed down with a bunch of other iron nuggets turned into an, uh, one of these iron ingots and I'm just gonna put that on there so you can see what it does. And so this will travel along and eventually it'll reach this. So now it's reached this one. This one will bring it all the way over to there and put it into our only storage container because those things are actually really expensive and I did not realize it first. But yeah, so now we have this storage container and any andesite that reaches the storage container just gets pushed out here and thrown into lava while the iron goes over here and gets pushed up the chute and into that barrel. So even though it's not the most efficient way to get iron, I think it's a pretty cool way to get iron. I think it's super fun to watch. I think it adds to the aesthetics of this build, just having like these machines over here. So I think it's super cool. And of course we can always come up here and grab some iron. Um, but I kind of got sidetracked, I will admit. While I was building, I got super sidetracked by this. That's right, a helmet. Oh, and this. Oh, and, and this. <laughs> they have a potato cannon and I did not realize at first and oh my goodness is it so cool because I, I was had a, ch a chance to uh, enchant it and let's see if we can get this, these pillagers basically you can shoot carrots or potatoes and if you have fire aspect on it it shoots flaming potatoes or carrots like how cool is that not a very good shot at it but this thing is just, it's crazy. 
It's, it's so cool. Oh, and because of the tank I'm wearing, I have water breathing right now, so... That's pretty cool as well. Boom, just killed two pillagers with carrots. <laughs> this thing's so fun. And it makes a funny noise, it goes thump. <laughs> um, but we do have one thing, since we're running out of time, there's one thing I want to do that I did promise y'all. Don't worry, I didn't forget. Uh, we have signs to place over at Dragon Girl's base. I posted a short about a week ago saying something along the lines of a subscribe would equal two signs and a like would equal one. And so we have 11 signs with us and let's head over there. All right, so here we are at the base and uh, we have signs that kind of fit their theme. I think we're going to put them right underneath here. So all the signs say the exact same thing. They all say we miss you. Um, for those of you who don't watch her channel, she actually posted something and is leaving. I'm not sure what she's doing, but she's uh, gone from the server. And uh, she started the server. So we're going to be playing on the server for as long as we possibly can because I love create. If it does get deleted, then we may be moving everything and I'll make sure to copy over everything over there onto the new one but um we're gonna be playing on this one for as long as we possibly can because this is a pretty neat world and I think it has some good stuff going on I'm not the only person who plays on it so yeah that's just kind of the current situation but but there are backup plans just in case and uh just wanted to say if y'all enjoyed the video Please like and subscribe, it's very much appreciated. And uh, I'll see y'all next time. Bye! With the, with the face mask. Goodbye! Bye!